Hi, I'm Kelvin Sim. I'm a 2017 SEA Games gold medalist. Join me in my cycling journey. I, I started cycling when I was about uh, five or six years old. When uh, Actually, it was my helper who uh, taught me how to ride the, the bike. So, you know, how uh, we, we started off with the balancing wheels, the two balancing wheels, and then he, we removed it and then I couldn't balance. So she would uh, hold me, uh, hold the back of the bike and, and uh, help me to balance. So from then, uh, that's how I picked up cycling. Yeah, it was uh, like a more like a once a month kind of thing of yeah, cycling. So in, um, actually in secondary school, we, I had um, like-minded friends who love cycling as well. So um, actually, uh, when I w being an obese kid, yeah, then we, we would actually cycle, cycle our bikes um, to Jalan Kayu. Back then, because uh, most of us are living in um, the Haugang area and Serangoon area, so we would have to bypass uh, Pongo to actually get to uh, Jalan Kayu. Back then, uh, Pongo wasn't so developed, so we would get chased by dogs and stuff. Yeah, so it was good fun. The best part was uh, having the Prata at Jalan Kayu. <laughs> I, I got into competitive cycling at the age of um, 15 or 15 and a half. Yeah, around there. And uh, I started mountain biking first. Yeah, so through mountain biking, you know, like uh, with a lot of weight, on me, you know, then I actually, I was like, at my peak, I was like 90 kilos. Yeah, so was, I was really heavy. And um, I entered my first race in Pulau Ubin, I could remember. And um, I actually didn't do so well. I think that, that, that was the, the spark that um, was ignited in me that I, I wanted to do better. So after that, I, I actually um, trained a lot, yeah, more like, I wouldn't call it training, but more like cycle a lot because um, uh, I wanted to get better. Then it started, I started to um, uh, participate in more competitions uh, after, after that race yeah, and, and became more serious. You know, uh, when I went, actually, I gained more confidence also when my weight started to drop. Yeah, and, and, uh, and of course, naturally, the race results came. You know, without any um, like scientific training, yeah, that that actually uh, helped helped me towards um, gaining some uh, the eye of some cycling clubs. So from there, actually, uh, a lot uh, one cycling club, the Shoulder Cycling Club, that actually uh, uh, brought me to my first international race, uh, which was just across Malaysia, <laughs> yeah, in Penang. Yeah, that, that, uh, that opened my eyes that um, actually there's a uh, uh, huge competition um, overseas, you know, because I think when I was younger, I only competed locally and, and um, sometimes we, I get to see like uh, Malaysians or Indonesians coming over to Singapore and race. Yeah, but it was um, very different when, when you go to somewhere different to race. In the lead up to uh, SEA Games 2017, I was actually uh, working full time at uh, Lu Bicycles as a bike fitter. So, um, bike fitting is about uh, analyzing the the cyclist movement on the bike and uh, uh, making some adjustments on the bike to uh, allow the cyclist to cycle efficiently and comfortably. I was 28 years old and I was uh, working about 45 hours per week and earning about $2,000 per month. In the lead up to SEA Games, uh, I actually uh, converted to part-time instead because of the, the ramp up of intensity and volume of training and also the travelling to, to a velodrome uh, which would uh, occur quite frequently. Uh, so I actually work only uh, about 12 hours per week. Yeah, that, that also drastically uh, uh, stopped, uh, cut my income. Yeah, for me it was a sacrifice that had to be made because I I really wanted to uh, do my best for this uh, 2017 Sea Games. 
Uh, actually, if um, I didn't get the result that I wanted, I, I actually would have retired yeah, after these uh, 2017 SEA Games. In order to convert to part-time, I actually save a lump sum of money, about $8,000, so that uh, actually I can do uh, multiple trips to Bangkok for training in the velodrome and also racing. There, there, was a, there were a lot of grassroots events in Bangkok, which allowed me to uh, uh, practice my skills on the velodrome and also hone my tactics in racing. And also, the, it also covered me for a, a trip prior to the SEA Games. We, we actually went to Colorado Springs uh, for uh, our first time at altitude training. One week prior to our training stint in Colorado Springs, uh, my teammate Noel actually uh, met with a life-threatening accident. Yeah, so he actually uh, smashed, smashed into a sand truck, a stationary sand truck. Yeah, so we, we were all very um, demoralized, you know, just and it was uh, just one week before our our training stint. Yeah. Uh, our hearts were all very heavy while we were boarding the plane because we it was so uncertain whether he would survive through this um, this accident yeah we were all so um, like demoralized and 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 so I need pause eh? So the men's omnium in track cycling is actually like um, in for athletics like the decathlon of track cycling. Yeah, it, there's uh, four sub events in one event, and all four events require uh, an an individual to actually uh, score points in each sub event. So the guy that uh, accumulates the most amount of points will win the entire race. Yeah. So actually um, in Towards the last um, part of the event, which is the points race, we, we were actually sitting about, I think, fourth and fifth, yeah, respectively, me and my teammate, Go Chun Huat. Yeah, so um, going into the race, we all, I mean, we, we both told ourselves that, you know, we have to just uh, give it all or nothing, like, no, like, leave, leave, leave nothing behind. Uh. So, we, we were both like so um, re ready to sacrifice for each other because I mean because uh, there are actually a lot of tactics in in the points race yeah so if if either one of us were ahead we will actually uh, help to to cover for each other at the at the at the back going into the points race we were all we were so fired up and and I I think the um, our opponents didn't uh, kind of like underestimated us as well. They didn't expect us to go uh, quite early in the race. It was uh, not even halfway in the race where we actually start, uh, actually launched an attempt to try and take a lap in the points race. So uh, while while taking the lap, we were still gaining points as well. That that added to our total points score. Yeah which uh, helped the, uh, leapfrog us from 3rd and 4th uh, and 5th to 1st and 2nd respectively. So when we were, when we were leapfrogged, we actually had to defend our position. So unfortunately, actually, um, Ahwat uh, uh, sacrificed himself and actually um, didn't get uh, his uh, medal because um, we had to... We couldn't chase uh, all the attacks as well. So he actually sacrificed himself and for us to get a result. In his sacrifice, actually, then we actually pulled off the gold medal, right? For me, I, I it was still it didn't really sink in when after even after I crossed the line, because towards the end of the uh, of the race, I was still waiting for confirmation whether I had won the race, because uh, it was quite messy. As you can see, I, although I didn't cross the line first, but then the, the race was quite hectic. So I had to wait for 
confirmation from my team managers and friends who were at, at the pit area, they were all jumping for joy and then I realised uh, we actually put off something uh, that we never done in 20 years. For me, the part where Noel was there at the velodrome was really the part where it made me really proud to see him standing there and cheering for us and helping us throughout the entire event. Yeah, to see him being alive brought me so much uh, joy yeah, because I couldn't imagine that uh, one, one and a half months before the SEA Games he was lying on the floor in my arms, you know, at, in his pool of blood, you know, and uh, me trying to call for the ambulance. So that was, I think, something that no one should ever go through. Yeah. So, so no, with no being there, I think it, it gave me. It was more important that no one was there than my gold medal. <laughs> I think the experience was uh, quite life-changing, you know. It was really an eye-opener to see how our para-athletes uh, actually compete. Yeah. I, for, for me, actually, I was a tandem pilot. So my, uh, the, uh, my partner behind, he was uh, visually impaired. Yeah, so to, to see how, how, um, how they overcome their disability and still uh, still managed to com com complete and compete. That that really showed me that you know is the the only limit is in your mind and also your spirit rather than f rather than physical limits. Yeah, so I think I think for me, I the biggest takeaway was if if they could, could they could do it, what, why can't I? When you are facing adversity, actually, uh, you shouldn't give up. Uh, because, um, as cliche as it sounds, um, as long we adopt a positive mindset, we can actually see through it and, and, uh, and we can go beyond it. Uh, in, and also, always believe in, in your abilities and also, also have the fighting spirit. Uh, because those 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 are the things that will actually push you to go beyond